I love Apple keyboards. Who doesn't like typing on a laptop keyboard all day? Plus, when I post this on my Instagram, everyone will think I'm so cool for being a Mac user. Check this out. I got this awesome Corsair mechanical gaming keyboard with cherry red switches. I got some major street cred now because everyone knows that cherry makes the nicest and the smoothest switches. Maybe people will think I'm a pro gamer. The F keys are membrane, but so you know not to hit them by accident. Got the most tactile switches in the world, Gateron Browns. I got both RGB and hot swap. I'm not sure if I should call myself a gamer or a keyboard enthusiast. Perhaps I'm both. I just saw a YouTube channel. Glorious really loves the word ascend. They're really working to get you high as possible. If I keep ascending, where would I end up? Maybe I'll start growing out my mustache and long flowing hair, look like Little Mermaid's dad. I wonder if they'll name a new switch after me then. Glorious Holy Water King. Or maybe I'll end up with an amazing keyboard at a reasonable price with all the features I'm looking for. Nah, that'll be unreasonable. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. This is a video that I've been waiting so long to make, literally. I put my pre-order for the glorious GMMK Pros last November, and now I have this highly anticipated keyboard in my hands. With so much anticipation, will it live up to the hype? Let's find out. The GMMK Pro comes in this nice box with a holographic image of, you guessed it, the GMMK Pro. The version I have here is the black slate in the US ANZ layout, 83 keys. This is a 75% keyboard, which straddles the space between a TKL and a 65%. When you open up the nice black and orange box, you're greeted by a nice thick protective cushion with a quick start guide. Underneath it all, the keyboard itself, along with a nice sticker that says, you guessed it, Ascend. Once you remove the keyboard, you see the extras included. You have a nice USB cable, a keycap puller, a switch puller, and extra gaskets. Take note on these gaskets because you're going to need them. This is a 75% layout keyboard, so it features the F row and the arrow keys. Even without a brass weight, the keyboard is surprisingly hefty. The black color here comes with everything color matched, which is a nice touch overall. There's a nice LED accent on the side as well. The anodization of my black copy was surprisingly decent, but I can't say the same about the silver one. Here is a closer look at the silver with Glorious Panda switches. I keep calling this silver because, Glorious, let's be real, your white is not white, it's silver. Just call it silver and stop misleading people. I'm not the biggest fan of 75% keyboards, but this one, I think it's a looker. Remember when I said the black finish was okay, but the silver is not? Here's a closer look at the anno issue that I noticed. In my opinion, stick with the black one. It looks better anyways. When you flip the keyboard over, you see a giant glorious logo milled out. And the USB port on this keyboard is in the middle. The rotary encoder is a nice touch. It has nice detents and a good solid feel. You can program both the rotation as well as the press down. Not sure why, but my black one had this tape residue. The silver one did not have that. Here is a closer look at the GOAT stabilizers. I'll get to these later. In order to get into the keyboard, there are 8 screws on the bottom. There are 4 screws in the front. And there's also 4 in the back. Glorious actually use stainless steel screws, so good and bad. Durable, yet they're non-magnetic. Once the screws are off, you just lift up on the top case to expose the plate assembly. Then you can lift up the plate assembly and then disconnect the cable that connects the PCB to the daughter board. At this point, you could also see the foam they placed on the bottom of the keyboard for you. Great start, but I feel this can be improved. More on that later. Once you lift the foam out of the way, you could actually see the bottom of the case. Here's a closer look at the daughter board. It's sitting in its own little crevice. You can also see the channel they created for the wires and the cable as well. This is a feature that got a lot of people excited. The glorious GMMK Pro is a gasket mounted keyboard. However, I noticed that a lot of these gaskets were a little crimped to say the least. So this is the reason why I was saying that the extra gaskets do really come into play. Now with the plate and the PCB assembly out, you get a nice closer look. You see the little light diffuser piece on the side? This really helps to create a very nice even LED effect. And finally, the hot swap sockets. Similar to the KL ones you see on most other PCBs, but this one is actually labeled glorious. But it works the same. If you want to separate the plate from the PCB, start by removing these 10 screws on the bottom edge. 
then remove the two screws holding the plate and the PCB together via the two standoffs. Once you remove the plate assembly away from the PCB, you could actually see that Glorious also included a foam in between the plate as well as the PCB. So a very nice touch here. The GOAT stabilizers in all its glory. Before we move further on, I want to touch upon these GPBT Cherry Profile caps from Glorious. Overall very nice. Um, I just didn't understand the packaging they put it into because it's hard to organize. But the caps itself are very thick, about 1.5mm, and the die sub legends are pretty crisp and clean. So given all that, what does the GMMK Pro sound like stock? I just dropped in some lubed Glorious Pandas with the GPBT caps to find out. Overall not bad, but that lubed goat stabilizer, uh-uh. And I did feel that there was a bit of hollowness, especially from the spacebar area. I figure this is because of the foam that Glorious included was pretty low density and flimsy. So I tried some different foams. The first up is my tried and true zip and fit liner. This liner is super versatile because you can tear off little squares and make it fit into any case pretty much perfectly. Here is a little sound test. In my opinion, this is better. Next up is a butyl sound deadener. This is the stuff that you see in cars to block out unwanted noise and also control reverberations. I've had some good luck with this in the past. Let's see how this sounds like. I like the sound of the caps, but not the spacebar. At the time of launch, Glorious offers three different plate materials for the GMMK Pro. You got color matched aluminum, polycarbonate, and the brass. Out of the three, I was most impressed with the brass. It's very thick and substantial, with quite the noticeable heft as well. Now let's take a look at how these plates sound. So what do you think? Now for the GOAT stabilizers. Glorious hyped these up so much, they called it the greatest of all time. But do they live up to their name? 
At closer look, they look very similar to a Durak or a Zeal stabilizer. The tolerances are pretty good as well, but how do they sound? So in stock form, uh-uh. But what happens if you actually do something like a holy or a bar and wrapping mod? Let's find out. I think that sounds pretty good. So yes, I did put some Duroc V2 stabs into this, but how? They're not supposed to fit, right? Well, no they don't. However, a jewelry file and some elbow grease makes anything work. So that's what I did. So now that I covered all this with all the different plates and the foam and the stab and the switch and the keycap options out there, how did I end up building mine? Well, I built two. The black one with a zip and fit liner, brass plate, Duroc V2 stabs, holy modded, Boba U4T tactiles, and GMK white and black caps. I love the clacky and lively sound of the U4T against the brass plate and the glassy sound of the GMK caps. I think this turned out beautiful. For my second silver one, I wanted to do a linear build. I wanted something mellow with a great balanced feel and sound. So for this one, I decided to go with the zip and fit liner, the aluminum plate, the gold stabilizers, holy modded, the JWK L4 linear switches, and GMK Hennessy caps with the yellow accents. I originally had plans to use Olivia caps and brass knobs on this, but this keyboard wasn't white. Regardless, I think it turned out stunning. So let's see how these final builds sound, and let me know which one you like better. At the time of launch, the GMMK Pro is not VIA compatible. It's supposed to be, but it's not. Some people on the forums have figured out how to use QMK on it, so you can look into that if you want to. So for the time being, you're stuck with this glorious core software. It's there, it has many functions in it, but I much prefer to use something like VIA. However, core allows for firmware updates for your GMMK Pro, so it's worth trying out at least once. So what is my final thought? Is this a keyboard that will make a boy into a man and eliminate the need for all other keyboards out there? Well, no. What it is is a keyboard that has all the sought out features in the keyboarding hobby today at a reasonable $170. It's aluminum, gasket mount, hot swap, rotary encoder, plate options, and a decent stabilizer and foam. This is my opinion and my opinion only, but if you're looking for a premium custom build without going too broke, I would strongly recommend that you look at the GMMK Pro in black, because white is not white. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.